My name is Paul Fisher. I have represented some of the world's greatest and most famous supermodels. Naomi Campbell, Stephanie Seymour, Carrie Otis, Carla Bruni, Monica Bellucci, and the list goes on and on and on. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Let me just get my stuff together over here and we're about to start. All right, guys. So, I'm Paul Fisher. How are you guys doing today? You guys cool? You guys excited? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to speak for about like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And today's topic is we're going to talk about uh, how to get signed with a mother agency and what's the responsibilities of a mother agency. Um, and then we're going to we're going to take a look at like three or four of uh, you girls, maybe some of you guys that sent in some of your pictures. And I'm going to give you some career advice going forward. And so let's let's start with this, okay? First of all, what is a mother agency? A mother agency is actually an agency that represents you in the local market. And 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 what's the job? Well, first of all, how do you know if a mother agency is any good or not? How do you know if a mother agency is respectable? How do you know if a mother agency can actually accomplish what you need them to accomplish? Well, step one is let's say, God forbid, you got into a car accident. And let's say that you needed a doctor to uh, do some kind of a surgery on you. And let's say, if, you know, God forbid that you broke your leg. God forbid. Would you go to a, would you go to a, a, a doctor who's never operated on a leg before? Would you ever let anybody operate on you or take care of you? That's actually never done surgery before. So then here's the question. Why would you let anybody represent you and manage your career if they've actually never made anybody famous before? Are you a guinea pig? Do you like being a guinea pig? You know, unless somebody can show you that they've taken a girl with a digital picture and actually made them famous, run the fuck away from them. Run, run as fast as you possibly can. Excuse my language, parents. Because if they can't show you that they've ever made anybody famous before, then your kid is a guinea pig. And then you, as a model, you're a guinea pig. And you don't want to be a guinea pig. You wouldn't let a lawyer represent your case if they've never represented cases like yours before, right? You don't want to be a guinea pig. You don't want to let anybody manage your career unless they've made people famous before. Does that make sense? So now if you walk into a mother agency and they say, oh, you know, this is a girl that we made famous, show me two. One, they got lucky. Two, they know what the hell they're doing. So step one is, as you're signing with a mother agency, the most important thing is, who have you made famous before? Who have you taken from A to superstardom? Who have you made five, 10, $15 million for? Because isn't that why you're modeling in the first place? I mean, if you're modeling to make money and if you're modeling to become a star, well then obviously, well, what's the concept? You gotta make sure that somebody, and not just me, I'm not just the only person who makes people famous. There's a lot, a lot there's not a lot of us, but there's a handful of us that actually make people famous. And so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're represented by a mother agency that actually understands how to create stars because it's not, it's not so easy. You know, many, many people think that a mother agency's job is just to introduce you to modeling agencies. No, a mother agency's job is to introduce you to, to, to agencies and then oversee a group of agencies, make sure they're doing the right job. Well, how do, they, how do you know that they know if they're doing the right job or not, well, the only one way. Have they created stars in the past before? You know, and if they haven't created stars in the past before, then they don't know what the hell they're doing. Straight out. Then you're a guinea pig and they're testing you. And, and you know, the modeling career is, you know, 14 to 21, 14 to 23, something like that, right? So it's a very short window. So you don't have time for them to teach and learn on you. You have to find people and find agencies and managers and mother agencies that are going to actually guide your career that have actually created stars before. So that's step number one. Step number two, you know, the job of a mother agency is to, is to develop you, make sure that you're, that you're getting into the right model shape, make sure that your body is looking right for whatever kind of modeling that you're doing. You know, the kind of modeling that I specialize in is very, very high fashion. My clients are Vogue, Prada, GT, uh, you know, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, you know, people like that. So, so the job of the mother agency is to number one, step number one, it's what I call polishing the diamond. 
Step one of the, uh, the job of the mother agency is to polish the diamond. So you're a diamond and their job is to polish you, get you into shape, make sure that your body is the right shape for whatever kind of modeling that you're trying to accomplish. The kind of modeling that we do at my company is we do very, very high fashion at the highest level. So my kid's gotta be a certain size, size zero to size two is a sample size to actually be able to fit the clothes. But some of you guys can be influencers. Some of you guys could be plus size models. Some of you guys could do swimsuit modeling. Some of you guys could be petite. And so there's all kinds of different modeling that you can do. So step one is what's the kind of modeling that you could do? And then what kind of shape does your body have to be in to do that kind of modeling? So the job of the mother agency is to figure that out. What kind of modeling are you right for? And then we got to polish the diamond. So we have to send you to acting classes, commercial classes, get your body into shape. Because remember you guys, the modeling industry sucks. Fuck it sucks. It's not a great business. Anytime you take a young person, ask them to live underneath a microscope, have their physical features judged five times a day, 25 times a week, 100 times a month, 1,200 times a year, and they go, it's not cool. You're gonna start looking in the mirror and seeing shit that nobody else sees. So you gotta make sure that your mother agency understands how the modeling industry works. What is the right kind of modeling that you should do? Are you an influencer? Are you a plus size model? Can you model in Europe? Can you model in, in New York? Can you model in Los Angeles? So step one is you gotta understand the whole world, the whole universe, understand what kind of modeling that you can do. Step number two, polish the diamond. Make sure that you're in the right exact shape for the kind of modeling that you can do. Step number three, tell you the truth all the time. You know, you, you may wanna say, oh, I wanna be a high fashion model, but if you can't pull that off, but you spend a year or two trying to do that, you've just wasted a year or two of your life and your mother agency just screwed up because they sent you down the wrong path. So the mother agency slash the manager, they gotta make sure what is the right kind of business for Chloe, for Tess, for Destiny? What's the right type of business? What's the right type of career that they should be traveling? Because what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna take a couple of years of a young person's life and have them waste their time. Going down, I, I want, my name is Janice and I want to be a high fashion model, but I'm five foot four. You've just wasted a year and a half of your life. You're not going to pull it off. Straight out. So step one is what's the right path for the young girl to take or the young boy to take or the transgender person to take? What's the right path? What kind of model are they? What market do they belong in? Step two, polish the diamond. Step three, take that diamond. Once that diamond is ready, and then introduce that diamond to the biggest and the most powerful modeling agents in the world and the most powerful designers in the world. You know, many people think mother agency's job is to place you with a modeling agency. Kind of correct. Is it the right agency? Is it the right agency for you? Anybody, any, any your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, anybody can introduce you to modeling agencies. Any asshole could do that. What's the right agency for you? Well, then how do you know what the right agency is for you? Do they represent stars? Will they continue to push you even when no, well, even when people say no? You know, Marjan Jockman's going through the roof right now. Yeah, five covers this month. She was just confirmed for the, the new Chanel campaign, shooting on Wednesday, Thursday with Carl Lagerfeld. But what happens when Marjan's career starts to go down? And it will. What happens when Julie Humad's career starts to go down? And it will. Well, the job of the mother agency, the job of the manager is to figure out new stuff, figure out how do we elevate it? How do we take it to another level? Because what's going to happen is, is that your agency, one day your career is not going to be going through the roof like Marjan's and Julie's. And most mother agencies give up on you at that moment in time. You keep calling them, they won't even return your, your damn phone call. So do you have a mother agency that believes in you enough? When that time comes and your career starts to dip a little bit, are they going to push you again? How much do they believe in you? Are they gonna wake up at three o'clock in the morning and jam for you? Is that what they're gonna do? Are they gonna make sure that when you're in New York City, you're seeing everybody that you're supposed to see? Are they gonna fight for you? Or are they just gonna be a damn answering service? So the mother agency is such a key, key, key position on the team because they have to motivate you. They have to excite you. They have to, they have to, they have to uh, polish the diamond. They have to make sure that you're in great shape. They have to motivate you. They have to push you. I am not a mother agent, by the way. I don't do that shit. I'm a manager. Mother agencies send their kids to me, but then I oversee the kids' careers. I don't have time to motivate and to inspire. I don't have time for that. That's the job of the mother agency. 
The mother agency's job is to get, now, if you've been with a mother agency for a year and they haven't got you one really great job, run. Run as fast as you can from that agency. Because if an agency isn't testing you, developing you, motivating you, getting you jobs in the local market, then they have no idea what they're doing. Then they're just idiots. They're just playing fucking dress up. You know, many modeling agencies in local markets, that's what they do. They think it's really cute to have a modeling agency. It's like freaking dress up for them. But this is a very serious career. Serious is a freaking heart attack. Because if you're going to take your time at that very important age between 14 and 18 years old, and you're going to put it into the modeling industry, well, then you want to know that people, that you surround yourself with people that, that take it seriously also. That respect your time. And they're going to push you and push you and push you, even when 20 people say no. You know, there's a kid online probably right now. Her name is Tess. She's one of the most beautiful kids in the world. Now, have agencies in London turned her down 10 times? Absolutely. Absolutely. People laughed at me. 100% Tess laughed at me. They don't like you. They don't think you're great. I think they're idiots. So what's the job of the manager? Make sure that even when you, when you get 10 no's, you keep knocking on doors. Do you know how many people turned down Marjan Jonkman until we got to the Yves Saint Laurent campaign? Every agency in New York. Do you know how many people turned down Julie Humans? Every single agency in Paris. They laughed at me. They said, she's too commercial. She's one of the biggest malls in the world today. So you got to find somebody, and I'm not the only one, that's like a freaking pit bull. Oh, you don't think Julie's great? You keep pushing. Oh, you don't think Marjan's great? Well, what, what, what if I would have given up on Marjan when 10 agencies turned her down? Well, then she wouldn't be one of the most famous models in the world today, would she? Well, what if I turned down, what if I dropped Tess right now or Destiny right now, drop them because five agencies said no. How'd you like that? And they're, you're going to get more no's than yeses. So do you, are you going to find a mother agency slash manager who after 10 people say no, they just give up? Well, if I would have given up on Marjan and I would have given up on Julie Humans, well, where, where would their career, where would they be now? They wouldn't have made the, the, the millions of dollars that they've made. So A, you got to find somebody that not only has a track record in creating stars. Well, when five agencies turn you down, is that mother agency going to drop you? Is that manager going to throw you out or are they going to continue to push and continue to push and continue to push? You see, as a manager, what I am, I'm a conductor of an orchestra. That's what I am. Yeah, that's right. So I take a girl and I place her with agencies all over the world. Marjan has an agency in Paris, London, Milan, Spain, China, Tokyo, Brazil, Germany, Los Angeles, New York, Seattle, 10 agencies around the world. Well, that's not where I, that's not where I stop. That's where I start. Once a girl has 10 different modeling agencies all over the world, then I act as a funnel and all the agencies have to come to me and ask me my permission for what they want on Marjan. I'm the conductor of the orchestra. Paris is my, my flute. New York's, are my, New York's my drums. Spain is my freaking saxophone. And then I, my job is to make sure that everybody's playing Marjan's song, that everybody's playing Naomi Campbell's song, that everybody's playing Julie Humans' song. And if they're not playing my girl's songs, then they get me. And I'm a prick. You don't want me. And why am I a prick? And why am I intense? Because we're taking a young girl's time and energy and we're putting it into a gross, gross business where every single thing is going to be judged on her physical trip. Yeah. So I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to these kids, as does your mother agency, to give you everything that we've got because you're taking your age between 15 to 18 years old, 15 to 19 years old, and you're putting it into this messed up business. So you deserve to have somebody that takes care of you. You deserve to have somebody that if 10 people say no to you, Destiny, you deserve to have somebody as the 11th person knock on that freaking 11th door. That's exactly right. You deserve tests to be working in the local market because you're one of the most beautiful kids in the world. You deserve that. And if your mother agency is not doing that for you, fucking leave them. We have a responsibility. You, you don't work for me. You don't work for your mother agency. They work for you. If your mother agency is not doing their job, fire them. If your lawyer's not doing his job, fire him. If the doctor's not doing his job, fire him. 
well, how do you know if they're doing a good job or not? Have you gotten any jobs in the last 12 months? Are they calling you? Are they motivating you? Are they keeping your body in shape? Are they polishing the diamond? Are they doing all the different things that I'm talking to you about? Now, how do you know which is the best mother agency to be with in each city? Well, do they create stars? Have they created stars in the past? And do they believe in you? Do they care about you? Do they actually care about you? Because, you know, as we spoke about in one of our last workshops, truly what creates stars is getting a group of people to truly believe in you, like believe in you. You know, we, we learn that in our consciousness, the, the real true enemy is not outside of ourselves, it's inside of ourselves, it's, our, it's doubt. And so if you have a group of agencies all over the world that have this much doubt that you can pull it off, get rid of that fucking agency. You need 10 different agencies, eight different agencies, seven different agencies, that have 100% certainty that you're the real deal. You need agencies all over the world that believe like I believe in you. If I could find 10 agencies, Tess, Destiny, Chloe, uh, Luna, Fialda. If I could find 10 agencies that believe like I believe, forget about it, we can close our eyes and become a fucking star. We don't have to do anything. 10 different people that believe as much as I believe in you. Then we don't have to do anything. It'll just open, the door will just open and shit will just happen. If you were given the gift and the blessing to have young people trust you with your career, would you not be passionate about it? Would you not take that as a serious responsibility? And that's what your mother agencies are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be taking this as a, as, as a very serious situation because you're taking your youth and you're putting it into their hands. So if you're gonna take your youth and put it into their hands, they gotta know their shit. They gotta have created stars before. They have to know that they have to polish you like a diamond. They have, they have to know that if your hips are now 93, that they have to motivate you to get them down to 89 and to 90. Not to put pressure on you, but to make sure that you're getting there. That's true caring. True caring is not, not, not telling you everything that you wanna hear. True caring is not, oh, you're great, you're beautiful, you're fantastic, you're be a freaking star. Bullshit. That's a con job. That's actually doing you more damage than good. Somebody who truly cares about you, they tell you the truth. Your hips are a little bit big. It's not going to happen this season. Your agency is really not doing the right job for you. You're not working out enough. You're not saying thank you enough to the people that we're introducing you to. You're late on all your castings. You're making mistakes. That's the true job of a mother agency and a manager. Tell you the damn truth. Anybody can sit there and say, oh, you're great. You're wonderful. You're going to become a star. You're the most amazing thing in the freaking world. Yeah. Tell me one kid you've made famous before. And if they haven't made anybody famous, run as fast as you possibly can from these people. And then when you find a great mother agency in closing, and you find a great manager, and you find somebody that can believe in you, and it truly, truly believes in you, because you have to remember, the first two years of your career, that mother agency, me, I don't make no money. These you kids who I manage, Tess, Destiny, you guys cost me 50,000 a year. That's how much money I spend on you. My time, my energy, my assistance. That's what I spend on you and I don't make no money. No money. Ask your parents, ask your parents, would you spend 30, 40, $50,000 a year on a kid you don't even know and you're not gonna make money off that kid for three or four years? That's what takes place. So thank me and thank your mother agencies because your mother agencies are actually putting time and energy into you and they're not making any money. I know, you young 15, 16, 17 year old kids are used to it. Give me, show me, take care of me, give me. What are you doing for me? Any of you people done anything for Paul Fisher? Any one of you. My birthday's coming up, September 27th. I'll make you a bet. None of you give me shit. Why? Because most models care about me, 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 me. What about me, Paul? What about me, Paul? What about me? Ah, it's fucking boring. Your mother agency is not going to make any money off of you for two years, three years, but they're going to wake up in the morning and put time and energy into you. That's what they're going to do. And so if somebody's going to put time and energy into you and they're not going to make any money, well, well, how much love should you show them? Would you work on a young person's career for two or three years and not make no money? Investing, 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 investing. And, and then you don't even know. She could fall in love. She could get chubby. You don't know what the hell is going to happen. So if you find a mother agency or a manager 
that's willing to knock on the 11th door when 10 people said no to you, and they're not making any money through that freaking process, how important is that person to you? I'd hold on to that person with freaking dear life. If I found somebody in my career that'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning and work on my, my career, and, and if I could find somebody that, that where 10 different broadcasters say they don't want my TV show, I can make you a supermodel or my new show, Real Pretty Woman, and then they could still knock on another freaking door, I'll hold on to that person, I'll send that person flowers, I'll send that person cheese, I'll do whatever that person wants. So when you find a mother agency that believes in you, that has created stars, that's willing to go to bat for you for two or three years and not make any bread, well, I'd say thank you every freaking day. Every day, once I found the proper one that had the experience, that created stars, that was, that was polishing me into a diamond, that was introducing me to the top people in the freaking world, what I do, I'd take them to dinner. I'd send them flowers every freaking day. That's what I would do. Now we're going to go into some um, interviewing of some three or four young people that uh, would like me to give them some career advice in front of all you guys. So we're going to take about a 60 second break. And the last thing I want to say before we take the 60 second break, for you people that have not gone to paulfishershop.com and not read my book, really? 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 I want to be a model. I want to be a famous model. And there's information out there that I can actually study and read, but I don't have enough time. I'd rather go hang out with my freaking friend. Well, then, 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 then please hang up now and never come on to my, one of my workshops ever again. I'm begging you. And if you think I need your $29, you're freaking wrong. What I need is knowledgeable people that want to learn and want to learn every single thing there is about the modeling industry. I'm doing a new show. It's called The Real Pretty Woman. I'm taking prostitutes off the street. Whatever their dream was prior to becoming a prostitute, my job is to make that dream happen for them. <clears throat> That's my new show. It's called The Real Pretty Woman. I'm studying everything there is to do about, know about prostitution. Everything from the beginning of time, from the biblical times. I'm reading the freaking Torah. I'm reading every single thing I could possibly read uh, so I can know everything about becoming the most powerful guy that could take women off the street that were prostitutes. I want to know everything. I'm speaking to psychologists. I'm speaking to everybody. And you're not reading a book about modeling, but you want to be a model? You're an idiot. And I could say that to you because I'm not your freaking parents. I want to be a model so bad, Paul. I want to do this so bad. It's everything. I want to be a freaking model. Then go get a freaking job and do a one-on-one -on -one consulting with somebody that's famous and powerful and prove it to us. How bad do you want this? It blows my mind. It blows my freaking mind. I want to be a model so bad, but I don't want to study shit. I just want it to, be, I just want it to happen. I'll be back in two minutes. Think about it. You're going to reach out to one of my assistants because I think you're really, really, really special. When you have no makeup on, I bet you you're flawless. The reason why, you know, I, I was looking forward to speaking with you again because uh, I think you're very special. Thank you. <laughs> I represent supermodels, but I think you're like, a, I think you're a super mom. <laughs> That's like my thing for Tracy, man. It's like super mom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out quickly what do the most powerful people in this industry think of Anna? So let's put up the first person so I can take a look at whoever the first person is and then we'll, uh, we'll jump into this. Are you guys inspired? Oh, yes. Hello, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Who, which, who am I looking at first? One second, please. Oh, oh. you still here? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hold on one second. One second, there we go. Right there. Yes. Yes, that's me. Okay. All right, Demi. Demi, yes. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's me. All right, cool. Is that, who's, that, who's that sitting next to you? That's, who's that pretty lady sitting next to you? Is that your mom? Hello, nice to meet you. Yes, You're the mom? Yes, sir. It's very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. What a pleasure. Very nice to meet you, Paul. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. You're very kind. You're very kind. So let me ask you a question. Where are you guys from? Holland. 
Awesome. Where? In the north. In the north. In yes. the north. Oh, cool. And what's the, what province? Drenthe. Oh, nice. You guys don't sit, you're not in, not in Friesland, right? You don't, not, not that far north, right? Almost, almost. Yes. Do you guys speak, do you speak Fries? Yes, actually, <laughs> yes. That's that funky language, man. I, I was listening, like listening to Marjan speak Fries, and I'm like, what the hell is she saying? I mean, like, you guys got your own freaking language and stuff. It's cool. Yes. Well, I'm not going to do that now. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. So, little Demi, let me ask you a question. Demi, how old are you? I'm 13 years old. 14. 13 14. Years old. 14. One, four. One, four. Yeah, one, four. Yes. Okay. How tall are you? How tall are you, Demi? Um, I don't think. One meter 77. Okay, uh, that's great, that's great. Now, do you have braces? Yes. yes okay, cool. Very cool. When yes. do they come off? When do your braces come off? When do they come off? Six months. In six months, they go off. Okay, take all your hair. Hey, Demi, Demi, take all your hair off your face. All your hair, like this. Like me. Yeah. Now come close to the camera. I want to see your face. Now let's just stop for a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, just like that, Demi. Okay. Okay, now back up. Oh, baby. I can, I can see inside your soul. One second. Hold on a second. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, cool. Okay, I get it. Okay, cool. That's up. You can take it down. I get it now. Okay, that's cool. Okay. So when are you gonna be when are you gonna be when will you be fifteen? When's your birthday, sweetie? What's that? Six of May. Six of May. Wow. That's a very very you're a Taurus. That's a very, very special day for me. Okay. The reason why that's a very special day for me because my sister, who I lost, my sister passed oh. away from cancer and her birthday was May fifth. Oh. oh my, I'm so sorry. No, oh, thank you. Oh. That, she's very special to me. I, I think about her every minute of every day. I love her more than life itself. But that's a very special day. Oh. May 6th is a very special. The day before is actually much more special to me, but May 6th oh. is a very special day. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. By the way, I love your eyebrows. Thank you. They're My great, mother not. Well, oh, they're it's great. Okay. They're freaking great. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. They're great. <laughs> They're okay, great. They're okay. Great. They're great. okay, so here's the story. Demi, here's what you're going to do. First of all, Demi, you're very pretty. Thank but your you. Picture, but your pictures suck. Sorry. Oh. You focus you're, much, uh, you're, you're oh. much more prettier. You're much more prettier in person than your pictures. Okay. Because your pictures suck. You're much more prettier in person. Much more prettier. That's much more. Prettier. Much more beautiful, young lady. Much more beautiful. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. So you guys have a job to do. First of all, you can't do anything with the braces. So here's what you're going to do. Um, Alex, who's, who's in London, who you may have been communicating via email, he's going to give you the email address of one of my assistants. Her name is Felicia. Right. And yes. what we want you to do is as soon as those braces come off, we want yes. you to email Felicia. All right. Okay, we'll do and that. then we're gonna do another Skype call and we're gonna talk about you. We're gonna talk about it because I wanna look at you, Dem, I wanna look at you, Demi, with the braces off. Because right now you're a bit young, but I wanna see yes. you with no braces, so that's in like six months. Are you cool to chill yes. for that long? Are you okay to chill yes. for that long? Perfect, no problem. Is that, is that cool, Mom? So Mom, you reach out to Alex. Alex will give yes. you Felicia's email address, and then you contact Felicia and we'll do another Skype call as soon, because your daughter's great, but we got to see her with the braces off. Yes. She's got the right height. She's really pretty. Yes. We got to see with the braces off when the age is right. Is that cool? Yeah, very cool. No okay. problem. And then when you, when, you, when you send me new pictures, all I want you to do, Debbie and Mom, is do the pictures like this. Yeah, with the hair. With the yes. hair back. Because the face is so pretty, I just want to see just the face, not the, not the hair. Cool? All right. Yes. Demi, we're going to speak again. I know your English isn't so great, but we're going to speak again, okay? Thank you very much, Paul. 
It's such a, hey, Gemi, let me ask you a question. Do you have an iPhone? Yeah. You have to yes. Yeah. You want to take a picture of me and you together? Oh, that would be nice. Okay. Come on. Yes. Let's do yeah. it. Put your face over there. Get our phone. Go ahead and go ahead. Get go get grab it. We moeten doen een foto met hem vast. Nee, je gaat foto maken met hem samen. There goes that free. There goes that Friesland rap. Okay. That free speech. Because no one believed that we talk actually right now. <laughs> I love the way you guys talk. Yeah. Look how good looking it is. Okay. Okay, you're gonna make a photo. Yeah, we're gonna do a picture of me and you. A picture of me and you. Mom can take it. Okay, I will take it. Okay, I'll do it for your Snapchat. Just get your face close to that screen. Oh, this will feel Okay, here we go. Yes. Yeah? Lovely. Cool. Okay. okay. All right, then. We, hey, Mom, we'll speak again soon. Six months. Yes. Six months. You, you reach out to me as soon as those braces come off. I can't wait to see you, Demi, okay? I will do that. Yes. All right. All right, Mom. I'll speak to you soon, okay? Yeah. Such a pleasure. So my pleasure. My pleasure. Have a beautiful day, you guys. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Yeah, we got to get new pictures on that kid. New pictures. Uh, <laughs> okay. So you guys are all very, very lucky because you get to the pleasure of seeing one of the most beautiful young people in the world. This is Demi. Thank you. Hi, Demi. Uh, sweetie, how are you? Great, and you? I'm great. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Thank you. So everybody, this is Naomi, and Naomi and I know each other very, very well. And Naomi, you're how old again now, right now, princess? I'm 13 years old. You're 13 years old. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about you in front of everybody. I'm sorry I got to do it, Naomi. Sorry, but everyone's going to have to learn by me speaking to you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, princess. Na Na Naomi is a very special kid. And the reason why Naomi is very, very special is because there's a problem with Naomi. Here's the problem. I'm going to explain to you what the problem is. Naomi, Na Naomi is 13 years old one of the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful kids in the world. But in the modeling industry, as in, mo as, in most, as in most elements of the entertainment industry, if a young girl becomes very famous when she's 13 or 14 years old, by the time she's 16 years old, nobody wants her anymore. That's the problem. The problem is if, if Naomi was 17 years old right now, in my very humble opinion, she'd become a very, very famous star right now. But me as a human being, as a person, to push a 13-year-old girl, even though Naomi wants to become a great model, like really bad, and she should become one right now, really bad. She's one of the most beautiful kids in the world. But if I push her at the age of 13 years old, by the time she's 15 years old, Will that candle still be burning bright? I don't know the answer to that question. You know, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do know that most kids that do really good in the modeling industry when they're 13, 14, 15 years old, by the time they're 18 years old, they're freaking nightmares. They make so much money and then nobody wants them anymore and then they're depressed because other girls have come along. And so what we're trying to do with Naomi, which is very difficult, try to tell a young girl who's really, 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 really beautiful that can model right now, that you gotta be patient. That sucks, right, Naomi? Sucks, sucks. I'm 13 years old, I'm 14 years old, I'm really pretty, everybody wants me to model, but I got this big old manager that wants to keep me on a shelf. Sucks, sucks, I get it, sucks. But my job is to see the big picture. And my job is not to say, well, Naomi, where do you want to be when you're 14? I don't give a shit where Naomi wants to be when she's 14. I don't care. I don't. I really don't. I don't really care. I care about where Naomi wants to be when she's 18. Where she's, when she's 18. And she can get mad at me today. That's okay. She can get mad at me tomorrow. I don't care. You can get mad at me in six months from now. I don't care. I don't care. Because I know that I'm doing the right thing. 
Because I know that if I really push Naomi down everyone's throat today, her mother, when she was 17 years old, would kick my ass. That beautiful lady sitting behind Naomi right now would come and look for me in LA and say, Paul, my daughter's 17 years old and nobody wants her anymore. And I'd like, I said, I know, I know, I, I screwed up. I pushed her, I pushed her when she was only 14. So what Naomi's doing now is she's doing a local modeling job and she's really doing really great and she's looking beautiful and she's, and I mean, the pictures are coming out incredible. And as, a, as an agent and a manager, it's a very, very difficult thing to, to, not to push because it's in my personality, I want to push. But if I push Naomi, by the time she's 16 or 17 years old, that fire may burn out. And how tall are you right now, Naomi? Five, how tall are you, sweetie? I'm 75. Yeah. How tall, how tall, how tall is your father? Um, 185. 185. Yeah. yeah, the kids, you know, that's, so here's the next, here's the next point. At 175, mm -hmm. you're like, that's like five foot eight, right? Yes. Okay, now watch this, Naomi. Hi, Mr. Magazine. Here's this beautiful girl. She's 13 years old. She's five foot eight. Yeah, she's very pretty, Paul. Hey, Mr. Magazine. Here's a girl that's 15 years old. She's five foot nine and a half now. What do you do? When do you show her? When do you show those people the kid? You show her when she's 13 and five eight or 15 and five nine and a half because your dad's tall. What do you do? You know, and let's say you only get one crack at Versace, Prada, Gucci, the biggest people on the planet. You get one crack at them. You, you show them Naomi when she's 13, 14, 5 foot 8, 175. When you show them, do you, do, you, do you pray? Do you pray that that child can be patient? And you show them when she's 15 and she's, and she's 177. Now, is that what a young 13-year-old girl wants to hear? Absolutely not. But it's the truth. But it's the truth. But it's the truth. And I can bullshit Naomi. I could say, Naomi, oh, you're great. You're amazing. You should be doing all these freaking things. But then I would not be thinking a year down the road. And I would not be thinking two years down the road. And that's got to be very, very frustrating for somebody as beautiful, as beautiful as this, I call her a child, as this beautiful young woman that's called Naomi. It's got to be frustrating. And I get it. Imagine being 13 years old and then people all over the world want you to model. But, but if you do, you could be cutting off your nose to spite your face. You could be hurting your long-term career. Tough. And Naomi is very special, as, as you can all see how beautiful this child is. Very difficult. Frustrating, right, Naomi? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, am I right? Am I, you're 13 years old. You want to model right now, right? Right now. Yeah. Right? I get it, sweetie. I get it. And you can and you should. And you that's why your local agency, whether it's Guido, who's incredible and I love him, whoever it is, they gotta just keep doing what they're doing to keep you in front of the camera. You know, can you take a trip to Paris one day and go visit agencies? Yeah. Yeah. If you ever took a little break, Princess, and you have a couple of day break and you say, Polly, I want to go visit modeling agencies in Paris, I'll set it up for you. And I'm gonna hope and pray to say the same thing I do, which is don't, don't push it right now. But can you go to Paris or Milan and meet modeling agencies? Absolutely. Can you do some modeling right now? Absolutely. Should you push it to try to become a star right now? Absolutely not. Because you cannot keep that fire burning for five and six and seven and eight years. It just doesn't happen in our business. It just doesn't happen. People will be tired of you by the time you're 17 years old. And when you could really make money, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So when you start, when you're 13, 14, 15, you're taking a big risk because if you, if they throw you out by the time you're 16, then whoever was guiding your career screwed up and, and that's very difficult. So, but can you go to New York and can you go to Paris and some of these other markets and do a little bit of modeling? If I were you, I would. That's what I would do. I'd go visit Paris, visit a couple of cities like that, get a nice little agency in that, those markets but be patient. So if you ever want to go to Paris, Princess, not during the show season, because you're not tall enough, right now is show season, right now we're all getting ready for shows, but if you ever want to go in a month or so and you say, Polly, me and my mom and dad, we want to go to Paris for 48 hours and visit agencies, let me know, I'll set it up. Okay. But you gotta be patient.
because you're so beautiful, princess, that you don't want to burn out. And you are that beautiful young lady. All right? Okay. All right. We'll speak again. And Naomi, if you want, if you want to carry this on, sweetie, um, next week we can do a Skype call. Next week is, uh, yeah, because t- tonight I start this, this, this holiday. And it's, you know, I'm a part of the Kabbalah place, Kabbalah Center. So we have this thing called Rosh Hashanah for the next couple of days. So I'll be, you know, I go off air in a couple of hours. But if you want, next week we can, we can Skype a little bit if you want, Naomi. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. And we, we, could, we could talk more in depth about what we're speaking about now, not in front of all these people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, Janice. All right, Mom. Mom, nice to see you, Mom. Bye. I send you lots and lots of love, Mom. Lots and lots of love. Okay. Bye, Naomi. You're looking beautiful. Bye. You guys are Bye, sweetie. Goodbye, princess. Bye. Okay. Okay. Hello. 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 Hi. Are you are you born in August? Yes. Yes. How did I know that? Wait, 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 hold on a second. Let me ask you a question. Have we ever met before? Yes. Have we met before? Yes. Um in Lisa. In Lisa. In Lisa. Oh shit, really? Yes. Can I tell you can I tell you how I know? Can I tell you? I don't remember, by the way, but can I tell you how I knew that you were born in August? Yes. The hair. <laughs> it's like a freaking lion. Leo the lion. You're a Leo. So it's like you have like this really cool August hair, like, like you're a Leo. You're... I was right, though. You're born in August? Yeah. <laughs> I love when I do that right. Okay. All right. So, sweetie, you're 17 years old. Yes. And we met in, let's say, with, with, on my TV show? Uh, no. No. Um, yes, it was also a workshop in Lisa. Oh. Yeah, when he brought it. It was oh, a workshop in Lisa. Spoke. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. when I spoke. At the, oh, okay, okay. Ah, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so where do you live now? Do you live in Lisa? Uh, no, in based in the middle of the Netherlands. Okay, cool. And you're, you're 17 years old? Yes. And you're 5'7? Yeah, 5.75. 176, 175. 170. That's a big difference, by the way. Just so you know, 176 and 175. I know it sounds weird. I know it's mm-hmm. going to sound weird, you guys. Like, Paul, what's the difference between 175 and 176? Nothing to me, but so much to the clients. So yes. much to the client. So, mm-hmm. so it is a big difference between 175 and 176. Okay. So now, um, are you with an agency right now, sweetie? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, uh, she was, um, she was, <clears throat> she signed a contract, but <clears throat> it's not really a contract. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 And why do you want to do this young lady? Why do you want to do this? You have to explain. Yeah, I can do it in, in Dutch, and I'll explain it in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it in Dutch, Princess, and then Dad will Dad will Dad will translate if you feel comfortable. You can do it in okay. Dutch. It's okay. Sure. Omdat moet dat uitleggen. Ja, leg maar gewoon uit in Nederlands. Ja, maar ik weet het niet zo goed. Ik ga maar uitleggen. You like you like you like the modeling and you like uh, the photo yeah. shoots and and everything <laughs> like that. And then what more? I like the real so models. Ja, de wereld. Gewoon dat iedereen altijd, ja, gewoon de wereld van modellen, dat dat leuk. Oké. Okay. She's interesting in the world of modeling. That's what more or less a summary in here from Dutch. Oké, 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 cool. So when are you going to be 18 years old? Uh, First of August next year. She just turned uh, 17. Oké. Okay. And, and, and sir, how tall are you, sir? 185. Okay. 175, 176, just turned 17 years old. Leo the lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's come to me. All right, so here's the situation. First of all, don't get mad at me what I'm about to say. You guys translate that for me. Yeah, yeah. 
But she understands. You understand what I, okay, so do, you promise not to get mad at me? No. Okay, good. You know, when a girl, you know, if you're five foot, if you're, if you're 175 and, you know, you really, you know, for my kind of modeling, you got to be like 176, 177, really 177. Okay. So let's say you're not, it's okay. So you're not, it's okay. So if I were your big brother, what I would do, here's the suggestion that I would do. Okay. And here's the part I don't want you to get mad at me about. Okay. You promised me, you promised me that you would not get mad at me. What I would do if I were you, I would get a little part-time job. I would save 500 and you've never heard me say this. I've done workshops for years, years, years. I don't say this shit, but I got to say it to you. If I were you, what I would do is I would go get a part-time job and I would raise and I would earn $500, 500 euro. That's the first thing that I would do. And then I would find the best photographer in Holland and we can send you an email of a couple of guys, women, whoever, that are great photographers. Great. And I mean great. And if I were you, I would go out and get the best possible test with the best possible photographer in all of Holland. There's a guy named Mark Candelari or something. There's, there's three or four really talented Talented photographers in Holland. Talented. Hans Peterson's kind of good too. Mm -hmm. He's cool. Orly is a great stylist. She could probably help you with this. I would do one sick test. And I mean beautiful. Because here's the problem, sweetheart. Your pictures suck. You guys know how to say that in Dutch? How do you say it? Your pictures suck. Yeah, yeah, but she understands. But you're beautiful. <laughs> but you're beautiful. The object of the exercise is to have pictures that look better than you. Right now, you look better than your pictures. Because of your hair and this, this lion stuff going on, you gotta go out and get the best possible pictures that you can get and then resubmit those to all the top agencies. Well, well, okay, let me give you one better. Here's what I would do if I were you. Cause you're so pretty. I'm looking at you right now and you're so beautiful. But when I saw your pictures, I was like, she's not a model. Your pictures suck, but you are beautiful. So here's what I would do. I would go out and I'm telling you, uh, many girls, I just say, do digitals, just do digital. It doesn't cost you five cents. But if I were you, if I was your big brother, I'd find one great photographer in Holland, spend 500 Euro and get, and then on my, on my website, there's a thing called lists, lists. I think it's like $19, it doesn't mean anything. But in those lists is a list of every top modeling agency on the planet. Every one of them, New York, Paris, London, Milan, Spain, Germany, every top agency. And I would take those pictures from that top, top, top photographer, and then I would send those pictures to every single person on that list. And then I would pray. I would, so step one, step one, and I wouldn't go to mom and dad and say, mom and dad, give me 500 bucks. I wouldn't do that because then, then you're not earning it. Then you're not doing it yourself. I would take a month of my time because I believe in my heart, young lady, when we go out and work hard for something and then we get it, we appreciate it much more. Instead of somebody, if somebody gives me a million dollars, it's cool. I'll take the million dollars. But if I earn that million dollars, if I earn it and I work hard to get it, makes me, makes me feel so much more better when I get that money. And I say the same thing to you. Don't go to mom and dad and say, give me 500 bucks. Go become a nanny. Go do something so you earn it. So that when you're doing those pictures, it's like, I did it. I earned. And then you take those pictures and you just send a simple email to every top agency on those lists. And then you pray, you yes. throw away all those old pictures. You get one set of sick pictures. You send those pictures out to everybody. And if, if every single person email, if every single agency says no, 
then don't do this. Don't do it. But if four or five, there's like a hundred agencies out there that are on that list. But if four or five agencies go, you're great, you're wonderful, I wanna meet you on Skype, well then you think about having a modeling career. Take the pictures, email the pictures out, pray, see what everybody thinks. If everyone says no, you give up. Or don't, or don't. I wouldn't give up, by the way. And I believe if you do that process, you'll figure out right away if you can be a, become a model or not. Yes. Because what you're trying to figure out, mom and dad, if mom and dad are both there, what you're trying to figure out is this. What do the top agencies in the world think of my daughter? Period. That's all you care about. And everything else is bullshit. What do the top agencies in the world think of my daughter? And I believe because of the height, because of the hair, because of everything, if it was me, I would get one sick, sick test Send those pictures to all the top people. You can get the list off the site. It's nothing, it's 20 bucks, doesn't mean anything. And then send those pictures out to all those top agencies and see what the world thinks of the kid. You'll know within 30 days what every top, top modeling agency thinks of your daughter. That's what I would do. All right. What do you think of that idea, young lady? What do you think of that idea? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, but she's already a nanny and she already has a part-time job. So the Fantastic. 500 euros. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and by the way, to find out who that photographer is, if you email Alex, who you've been in touch with, my girl Felice in my office will send you three or four possibilities of photographers. And all you got to do is reach out to those photographers. Pick out any one of the three that I send to you. And these are nice photographers and we'll send you all their information. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay my, little, okay, my Leo girl, you're a Leo the lion. It's such a pleasure. And by the way, sweetie, such a pleasure to meet you. You're very beautiful. And it's such a pleasure to meet you. Such a pleasure to meet you. Okay, you want to do, you want to do, you want to do a picture of me and you? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Is that now what I'm built? Yes. All right, cool. All right. Hey, so listen, such a pleasure to meet you. I've got like 10 minutes of a QA and a and then I got to go pray at 1130. So such a pleasure to meet you. And you're great, by the way. Thank you're you. You're great. You're freaking, you're much prettier than your pictures. Do what I say. I have a funny yeah. feeling something, I have a feeling something great will happen. Okay. Okay. Now okay. you guys, we're going to take a one minute break. Then we're going to do Q&A for 10 minutes. One minute break. Nice to meet you, young lady. Nice to meet you, Bonas. Me and my team have spent the last year developing the I Can Make You a Supermodel mobile app. I've had such a huge demand because of the show becoming such a big hit. So people all over the world are trying to figure out how can they be a part of I Can Make You a Supermodel. We've figured it out for you. We've created a mobile app, an I Can Make You a Supermodel mobile app, where you, no matter where you live in the world, you're actually going to be able to upload your pictures and actually enter seasons of I Can Make You a Supermodel. And then what I'm going to do is we've got fans and, and, and audiences and friends all over the world that can actually vote on you. I want to hear now what the audience thinks. I want to hear what the fans think. I want to hear what your friends think of who I should select as the next supermodel of the freaking world. That's what I want to figure out. The other thing that I've done is I've got all my friends, the most powerful modeling agents in the world, from Paris, Milan, London, Spain, Germany, Tokyo, uh, China, Brazil, Los Angeles, Miami. The biggest agents and agencies in the world are actually going to be looking at your photos on the I Can Make You Supermodel app. And then what they're going to do is they're going to reach out to me and my team and say, I like this kid, I like this model. And then we're going to put you directly in touch with that agency who's interested in you. I'll see you on the runway. Okay, guys, so I've only got about five minutes. I'm so sorry, you guys, for Q&A um, because I've got to go be at my prayers at 1130, so please forgive me. But I'm going to answer two really important questions that, I, that are coming in over the Q&A, you guys. Step one is, what is the first thing that you're supposed to ask of your agency, of your mother agency? And then we're going to talk about height, being 5'6 or 5'5". 
step one is you walk into that mother agency of yours and you say, what is your strategy? How do you plan on making me into a model? What is the step-by-step process how you're going to create me into a model? What you do is you want to walk into that agency and say, number one, show me what stars you've made in the past. Maybe if I'm a parent, I'd like to meet the, if I'm Naomi's parent, I want to meet the parents of other kids that you've made famous. That's it. You know, if Naomi's mom said to me, hey, I want to meet Julie Humans, I'll say, yeah, great. I'll introduce you to Julie and her parents. Both of them are doctors. I've been taking care of the kids for five years. Julie won't go to the, won't do a job without my permission. And why do the parents trust me so much? Because they know I got the kids back. Simple. So step one is, you know, you walk into the agency and say, show me who you've made famous before. I'd like to meet the kids. I'd like to meet the parents. That's a, that's a simple question. Number two is, uh, where do you see me? Where do you see my career? Am I a plus size model? Am I a petite model? Am I an influencer? Am I an actress? Am I a commercial model? Am I a catalog model? Am I a high fashion model? Where does that agency see you? What category do they put you in? And then step number three, what are you guys going to do to make my dream come true? What steps are you going to take? What steps do I need to take? Lay it out for me. What's my short term goal? What's my long term goal? How do you plan to take me from step by step by step? What kind of model do you see me as? What markets do you see me at? What markets do you see me in? You have to remember, you guys, you do not work for this modeling agency that you're with. They work for you. I don't, I don't work. Test doesn't work for me. Destiny does not work for me. Marjan does not work for Paul Fisher. Julie Humans does not work for Paul Fisher. I work for them. I have to understand what they want. I have to understand what their dream is. I have to understand, can I make that dream happen? I have to be honest with them. They have to tell me who they are. I have to lay out a strategy for Marjan, for Julie, for Sway. And then they have to sign off on that strategy. It, once they sign off on that strategy, it's my job to then execute that strategy. You know, I represented a girl years ago. Her name was Patty Sylvia. You know, she was five foot five. I think I put her on like 40 or 50 covers of Allure, Elle, Vogue. You know, Kate Moss, five foot six. I never represented her. Dear, dear friend of mine, under five foot nine. Is it possible to be five foot five, five foot six, five foot seven and pull this off? Yes. But it's very, very difficult because there's so fewer jobs to make you famous. For every 10 jobs that come in that can make you famous every day, nine of them are for girls 177, 178. Excuse me. So if you're not five foot nine or five foot 10, you're not going to fit the clothes. Does that make it impossible? Absolutely not. Does that make it very hard? Yeah, absolutely. But if you're five foot six and five foot five, there's all kinds of modeling that you can do. How's your body? Do you have a beautiful body? You can do swimsuits and bathing suits in, in Miami, make a ton of cash. You can be five foot five and five foot six, but have incredible communication skills, become an influencer. Take your story online. You can be five foot five, five foot six. You can become an incredible actress. You can become five foot five and five foot six and do beauty modeling. So now let's say you're five foot five or five foot six and, you're, and, and, and your, mo- your mother agency is like, we're going to do these fashion pictures of you wearing long Yves Saint Laurent clothes. Just look at them and say, what are you, stupid? I'm a beauty model. I do pictures of my face. What we want to do in the modeling industry is we want to attack our strengths. We want to stay away from our weaknesses. If you're five foot five, five foot six, your weakness in the world of high fashion is your height. Stay away from it. If you're five foot five, five foot six, but you got a great face, that's what you want to, that's what you want to show to the world. This is my face. I was like, hey, or beauty. Da, da, da. What type of model are you? If you're five foot five, five foot six, the chances of you walking for my clients, Prada, Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, chances are it's not gonna happen. If you, but I'm telling you, if you're let's say you're one of my, let's say Marjan Jonquin, six foot tall. 
what if Marjan wanted to become a great actress? Probably not going to happen. She's not going to match the men. The men are much shorter in the acting world. So we have to be honest with Marjan. If she wanted to act, we'd probably say, no, it's probably not going to happen. It's slim to none. Just like a girl five foot five, it's going to have trouble doing what Marjan does. There's the right fit for each kid. You have to ask your mother agency, what is my fit? Where do I belong in this industry? And I can assure you of one thing, you guys, you belong somewhere. If you want to do this, you belong somewhere in my industry. And I hate keep talking about, you know, go get Paul Fisher's book and go get Paul Fisher's book. Cause I hate that shit because it's my book. So don't get it, get it out of your shit. But inside the book, it's going to show you all different types of model, how you can become an influencer. You can become a plus size model, you can be anything. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, that you got to figure out your round peg. You got to find a round peg to fit into. You can't take a round peg and fit it into a square peg because then you're going to get splinters. Like, you know, you heard me say this before. I'm a little white guy, five foot 10, five foot 11, five foot 11. And, and I want to play basketball for the Lakers. It's not going to happen. So I became the most famous modeling agent in the freaking world. I found what my niche was. And a five foot five, five foot six, influencer, bathing suits, lingerie, beauty, so many different things that you guys could possibly do. Step one, gain the knowledge before you start entering into our world. You know, you, you, you took the first step. I'll close with this. You took the first step. You came onto my workshop and you're starting to become educated about your career. Learn everything, you guys. Learn everything there is to know about your career because this is your career. And then believe. Believe. Believe more than you've believed in anything in your life. Believe. Don't let doubt enter your mind. You know, have 100% certainty that you can pull this off. But then figure out which avenue, which road you have to take to make that dream come true. So now i got to run. And I hope and I pray that I've, uh, my words have resonated with your soul. I hope and I pray that you've learned a lot. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is, if you really want to become great in anything, work hard, believe more than you believe in anything in your life, and then do it for the right reasons. Do it because you want to give back more to the world. Do it because you want to become a bright, shining light in our industry. Do it because you want to touch and connect with other young kids around the world. And then watch the blessings come to you. All right? Have a beautiful Sunday. Peace. Hey, everybody. Paul Fisher here. So check this out, you guys. Next week's workshop is going to be off the hook. I want to tell you a quick little story real quick. You know, many of you want to be high fashion models, just like I want to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's not going to happen. But there's another whole world of the entertainment industry that you may be perfect for. Television commercials. If you can't walk down the runway and you don't have the right proportions, body proportions, and the right look for the runway or for print, there's TV commercials. Because TV commercials, you could be four foot tall to seven foot tall. You could be 80 pounds to 500 pounds. It doesn't matter. As long as you put in a lot of time and energy and want to become a TV personality. In Los Angeles, let's say there's 100 jobs done a day. 96 of those jobs are television commercials. Four of those jobs are print. Now in New York, let's say there's 100 jobs done a day. 96 of those jobs are print and four are TV commercials. So what am I trying to tell you? Los Angeles is the land of TV commercials. So if you want to become a commercial person or an actor, you got to go to Los Angeles. If you want to do modeling, that's New York City. So LA, you have so many opportunities to become a great TV personality and a great commercial star. Now, if you think you can live in Holland, if you think you can live in London and then do commercials in the United States of America, you're wrong. Actually, when you do TV commercials, you actually have to be seen by the casting director, so you have to be here in person. Right now, I'm not in Los Angeles. I live in Beverly Hills, but right now, I'm on the East Coast visiting my family. But let's say I wanted to be a commercial actor. I couldn't, be, I couldn't live in New York. I couldn't live here on the East Coast. I gotta be in Los Angeles. I gotta be where they're casting the actual TV commercials. Now, let me, let me close with this because you're gonna learn so much about TV commercials in our next week's model workshop. You're gonna to get to meet somebody who I trained, her name is Dina, one of the top TV commercial agents of LA, 
For the last 25 years, I trained her personally myself. So check this out. You know, you do a modeling job, you can make $1,000 in a day, you can make $10,000 a day. Some of my girls make $25,000 in a day. Check this out. You could do a TV commercial, you can make $100,000. Because every time that TV commercial runs, you get a check in the mail, like a freaking ATM machine. Pretty damn cool, right? So listen. If, if you're not right for high fashion modeling, if you can't do Vogue, Prada, Gucci, if you're just not right for that, don't freak out. Do TV commercials. Come to Los Angeles. Great market in Los Angeles for TV commercials. But we're also going to talk about it at the workshop. How do I get a visa? How do I work in the United States of America to be able to do TV commercials? So if you really want to be a part of my world, if you really want to be a part of the entertainment industry, check in next week. I'm going to teach you how, even if you're not. Five foot ten. See you in LA.